Hello and welcome to UC Today. I'm Senior Editor Tom Wright and today I'm joined by Eric from Blue Jeans. Thanks for joining us, Eric. Tom, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you. And I wanted to first start by asking you about your time in the role. I think I'm right in saying you started in May. So how have the first few months gone? Yeah, it's been it's been a bit of a whirlwind, but a great one at that. Uh, May also was the one-year anniversary of the acquisition of Blue Jeans by Verizon. So continuing to integrate and elevate the team within Blue Jeans uh, across all of our, our global assets uh, with Verizon. For my role, uh, I've been tasked with supercharging uh, both the sales team uh, and also the product team. Uh, and then we're investing really heavily uh, in R&D uh, at, at a perfect time, I think, as the industry um, uh, starts to evolve with a living with COVID environment. Uh, there are some unique uh, use cases and needs uh, of the customers that, frankly, are not addressed in the market. So it's been it's been dynamic. It's been exciting. And I think the best uh, the best is yet to come, to be candid. But we're off to a great start. And then you mentioned the acquisitions. So that was a year and a couple of months ago now. How has that yeah. sort of played out so far? <laughs> well, look, I think um, if you go back pre-COVID, we were in the marketplace um, for a video um, asset uh, to complement the UC portfolio. We believe then and we believe now uh, that video will play an integral role in unifying communications. What we didn't know, Tom, uh, was that the COVID-19 pandemic was right around the corner. So we made this acquisition during a COVID pandemic. Uh, the team had not met with anybody, the team of Blue Jeans had not met with anybody from Verizon face-to-face uh, until most recently when I went out to the headquarters in San Jose and Silicon Valley uh, in California. Uh, so it was a very unique um, integration. Now, structurally and technically, Blue Jeans was a perfect complement. Uh, they have the security uh, and breadth and experience, 10 years in the cloud video interoperability marketplace, uh, doing things like rooms as a service and smart meetings. So they had this, this breadth of technical knowledge that aligned very well with Verizon's tenants, which is also built around network trust, um, reliability, credibility, uh, and also a massive uh, enterprise um, base outside the US uh, for global IT networking, managed services, professional services. But again, that, that security layer, layer is really common to both uh, companies. So it's been, it's been meshed uh, really well. And it's worth pointing out, actually, that you had roles at Verizon before you took, um, took the Blue Jeans role. So you've got a good understanding of both businesses. Are you able to sort of talk through um, how we can see Blue Jeans be integrated into the wider Verizon portfolio? Because I know a lot of people are excited about that. Yeah, so it's, um, it's, it's really at its infancy. Uh, but we did not buy uh, Blue Jeans. We being Verizon didn't acquire Blue Jeans just to, to be our own video company. The whole premise is that you have a video, which is a critical application, a heartbeat application. You can't run your business in today's world without it um, as part of your portfolio, but now integrating into the things we do well, such as the handsets, right? So having uh, you know the, the industry leading uh, mobile application onto the handsets, that's a natural thing. Motorola uh, was the first 5G ultra wideband, uh, which is in the US, the highest speed that we can uh, deliver within the industry uh, today. Uh, fastest um, and lowest latency, fastest speeds, lowest latency, and highest throughput as a characteristic of that particular technology. So we've launched the first iteration of that with Motorola, uh, Vuzix uh, glasses. So think about being able to enable field workers uh, to go out there and put on uh, glasses and have remote participants be able to see what they see. But, but beyond that, Tom, I think that's kind of generation one. Now think about layering in AI and ML technology such that you're getting um, uh, schematics or information fed to the field worker to really enable that. <clears throat> All of those use cases are predicated on edge computing and having the ability uh, to layer into um, hybrid cloud providers globally, uh, such as Microsoft Azure, which we just launched, or AWS, uh, Wavelength Services, which is the marketplace. These are two domestic uh, offerings here in the U.S., uh, but we expect uh, some uniqueness as we as we continue to grow this ecosystem uh, globally. But that um, enables a whole use of video that hasn't been uh, put into production before. It simply didn't exist, such as highest re resolution, 4K video, lowest latency, uh, AI and ML uh, technologies for predictive analytics, autonomous vehicles. So this ecosystem is really at, at the first stage of the generation. And I think back when 4G was was enabled, uh, where we were, and we, we talked about these hypothetical use cases and 
telehealth and remote patient care and all these different things that were, were, were possible, but now they're actual. And I, I see the same um, trend uh, emerging with 5G, but video is going to be much more pervasive than it ever has when it's here to stay. The pandemic has most certainly institutionalized uh, that within our workspace. Now it's about not just video one-way or two-way communication, but but how can we use that in a, in a very rich and engaging way uh, to bring new solutions to the market for our customers and for their customers? That, that's our goal. And then I wanted to ask you about Blue Jeans um, in particular. You announced a enterprise-specific bundle earlier this year. Does that kind of signal uh, a change in focus or an expanded focus for you? I think it's a continuation um, of, of a focus of bundling the assets. So, for example, uh, in the SMB, small mid-sized space, you've got an unbeatable offer when you, when you bundle the landline uh, with your smartphone service. It's price leadership uh, in the domestic marketplace coupled with the best uh, smartphone experience on the best network. Uh, so that is there uh, in that particular segment. But as you move up market, think about consuming um, video as a platform as opposed to a product. And think about um, multi-state engagement, meaning whether I'm in an event, I'm in the office, I'm in, plugged into a, an immersive room system, or I'm on the road, or I'm in my remote office uh, at my home. The key is unlocking the engagement of the participants. And we believe that enterprises need that end-to-end -end ubiquity of experience, such as ability to bring the network, security, professional services, to tie it all together in a globally distributed workforce. Our goal is to provide those tools uh, and the building blocks so each enterprise can build their own. So you'll see more in the, in the way that we bundle, but know that that is uh, part of our strategy and will continue to be as we go forward. Okay. And I wanted to ask you to look forward a bit now, if that's okay. You've already mentioned uh, a couple of trends that you're seeing unfold at the moment, but is there anything else you'd really pick out as expecting to, to see really grow in the UC industry over the coming months and years? Yeah, I think the, 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 the term UC will evolve rapidly in the, few, in the next few months uh, and, and going into next year, because it's no longer about you know, speeds and feeds and connectivity. It's, it's about uh, enabling hybrid work. I mean, that is functionally what every IT organization and every human resource organization is going to have to grapple with, depending on where your, your corporate culture is and what the goals of the organization are. But meetings perspective, you need to merge conference rooms with workstations, with remote participants. And again, no matter where they are, uh, that we enable this, this um, structure and strategy of engagement such that everyone has a voice on that team that is common that the video is high quality, the audio is high quality, and that you're not on the platform just to spend your whole day there, but you're, but you're getting into these conversations that are immersive, uh, that are meaningful, and that lead to an outcome and output. Uh, so it's really being intentional about that. That's number one. So that's meetings perspective, having hybrid work, uh, tying the different assets. But there's also this emerging trend of virtual and hybrid events. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the next industry show. Uh, that I'll be attending later this month. That's it. I'll be in person, but a majority of the folks attending won't be in person. So creating this hybrid working environment at the event scale, where you have thousands of participants, each uh, accessing the technology and the content in different ways, that's a complex uh, set of uh, requirements that we are solving in conjunction uh, with partners. So I'll, I'll give you a little teaser there. More to come there, but large-scale meetings, town halls, conferences, uh, having Q&A, polling, engagement videos. And, and I think the expectation, Tom, for this is going to be studio level production. It, it's no longer going to be, you know, well, that was good enough or you know, I couldn't see or couldn't hear. No, we have to elevate um, this, um, this uh, engagement model uh, with sentiment, cohesion, uh, regardless of the location. That's easy to say. It's hard to do, but that's what our, our my life's work. And that's what our mission is at Blue Jeans. And you gave us one little t uh, teaser there about what we, we can expect to see, which is nice. But are you able to give us such sort of any other hints about what we can expect to see from Blue Jeans over the coming months? Sure. Um, the rest of the year is going to be dynamic. You, you'll see a series of um, announcements here uh, starting later this month and rolling in through the, the balance of the year that addresses the needs in the marketplace. And I'll be uh, welcome coming back and providing those updates as we launch them so I can give some more color and context and depth to them specifically. I'm not able to disclose exactly the functionality now, but, but know this, the concept of work 
is changing. It's no longer a location. Okay. Uh, it's what we do every day. We've been doing this, uh, us being the collective um, uh, global workforce for the last 18 months. It will continue uh, as this uh, situation evolves and different markets will behave in different ways and different organizations based upon their needs uh, will, will behave in different ways. But creating virtual workspaces in a, in a different way uh, and engaging each constituent so it's natural and people can do the best work uh, is super critical for me and my thinking. The other piece to this is the employee experience. We often talk about the corporate experience and what it means to, you know, for a company to, to drive unified communications. My lens is also the employee. Are we enabling each of our team members across our respective organizations to do their best work uh, with their set time parameters and their location uh, preferences? And, and is it, is it consistent? Uh, so you'll see this uh, elevation. And then the last piece, uh, enterprise grade. Uh, there's been a lot of, you know, uh, quasi consumer offerings out there. And, you know, those types of things. Our position is regardless of segment, small, medium, large, that you have an enterprise grade experience that is easy to use, simple to understand and leads to meaningful work outputs. Uh, that is our goal. So you'll see all of our announcements around those themes in the coming months. And I'm, I'm really excited to tell you more. So I can't do it right now, but I most certainly would uh, come back and welcome a conversation when the time is right. Yeah, we'll certainly keep an eye out for those announcements and be happy to, to welcome you back. But I suppose in the meantime, Eric, thank you so much for your time today. It's been great to have you. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and a share on social media. And we'll see you next time.